I've tested about a dozen or so USB-C hubs, and all of them are very terrible when it comes to these things. Seriously, each brand has perfected the bare minimum when it comes to these cards. It's kind of the bare minimum that's akin to showing up to a potluck with a bag of half-eaten chips. Technically, yes, you did bring food for everybody, but it's clear that you just don't care. Ready, Monty? Let's go do the top five. Number five goes to this, the Zumi Ping Zami Ping Zami Ping. It's number five, barely. Now this hub had the worst charge speed in my test group. I actually lost charge when I was trying to plug it into my laptop. In 15 minutes, I had minus 1% charge. Here's a dirty little secret. Regardless of how much power these hubs claim to produce, part of it actually goes to the hub. It says 100 watts for this thing, only 87 watts goes through it. Which is gonna be fine if you're charging an iPad, but if you're charging a laptop, that's, you're gonna care about that. Now the second thing I didn't like about this hub was the temperature. It ran the hottest in my test group at about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The average was only 101, so not a big difference, but electronics and heat, they're not the best of friends. We're the best of friends, right, Bud V? And the last thing I didn't like about the hub were the USB ports. When it came to the USB 3 data transfers, it was on average noticeably slower. So why would you actually get this hub? It's got two USB-C ports. Most of these other brands claim to have a USB-C port, but it's only for power. There's no data transfer that goes through it, so it's kind of useless. Now with that extra port, it almost future-proofs this product. Now the second pro for this product is this cabling. It's quite a bit longer on average, which means when you're using it with an iPad, this thing lays beside the iPad instead of kind of dangling off of it. Like this hanging dong look doesn't look good. Dongle. Hanging dongle, I mean. Now for me personally, I would pass on the Zoomy Ping only because it doesn't charge my laptop. So why would I buy it? Number four belongs to the Anchor Power Expand 7-in-1. Let's talk about why you shouldn't get this product. In terms of portability, this is actually one of the bigger hubs I've tested. Yes, it does come with seven ports, but this thing also comes with seven ports and this is a uh, number two. Now with the Anchor Power Expand 7-in-1, it does include two USB 3 ports, but from my testing, they were below average. Both these ports performed poorly in my read-write tests with external drives and charging my iPhone through this hub while fully loaded wasn't great. Now when I say fully loaded I was not uh, I was playing a game on my laptop having it draw as much power as I could through the hub and trying to charge an iPhone at the same time. That was my fully loaded test. Now the number one reason to get this product has to do with these little SD cards. The data transfer speeds weren't terrible. Are they as good as like a dedicated card reader? No. Will it read faster SD cards? No. When it comes to these SDXC cards where the read speeds can be around 277 to 300 megabits per second, this anchor thing reads it at 90. So yeah. Yeesh. Now it seems like this isn't a great reason to recommend this product because it doesn't read, you know, newer cards at the best speeds. But consider this, the three most popular non-anchor USB-C hubs on Amazon have terrible card readers. I've tested them all. If it's the first time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. All I do is just roundups for tech accessories. So I'm not a sponsored channel. No one's paying me to do a review of USB-C hubs. I just want to find out what the best one is. So help me out by getting your stuff through my links. Right, Monty? All right, let's talk about number three. It's also from Anchor. This is the Power Expand 8-in-1. My assumption is that these two products would be very similar. And assumptions can be wrong in a review. Oh, Jack. The Anchor 8-in-1, Power Expand 8-in-1, that's this one. Yeah, this one is better in almost every regard. Let's talk about why you shouldn't get this thing. First of all, it's 50 bucks. It's one of the more expensive products that I've tested. There are other products that claim to have similar specs that are about half the price. Second of all, the flow through charging with this hub was about 10% slower uh, through my laptop. So if you're a mobile worker and charging your device on the go is important to you, 10% could be a lot. But if all you do is just plug it in at your desktop and you don't ever move it, who cares, right? Are those deal breakers for you guys? If there aren't, well, here are three cons, pros, of why you should get this. Like the 7-in-1, the SD card reader is pretty spectacular. In a bare minimum kind of way, this hub consistently performed top three in my uh, testing. But it falls into that same problem is that it will not read these faster cards at the maximum speeds. It reads them at about third of the speed. So yeah, not great for creatives. Now the reason why I would get this hub are the USB 3 ports. When doing my data transfer tests through the hubs to an external drive, they were about 25% faster on average with the Anchor 8 one, which is significant. And charging a device during my fully loaded test, 15% faster with the Anchor Power Expand 8 one, which is like the complete opposite of the Power Expand 7 one. So what gives Anchor? Another thing to note is that the build quality is a little higher than the Expand 7 one. This top piece is kind of metallic, I think, where the rest of it's plastic, whereas in the other Anchor product, it's just all plastic. 
it just feels better. The last thing that sets this Anchor product, and this goes for the previous Anchor product as well, is that they come with a baggie. I know it may not seem like much, but being able to tuck this cable in when I'm throwing it into a laptop bag makes a world of difference in terms of keeping everything together. I honestly didn't think this terribly packaged product from Benfi would actually make it into the top three. If you're on a budget, this thing is about 20 bucks at the time of this video. This USB-C hub is the best bang for your buck. It's got a flaw to it, but it's overall very, very good. Get this USB-C hub if all you need to do is just to plug in a bunch of peripherals into your computer. But like always, if you're creative, stay far, far away from this because the card reader on this thing is terrible. Remember that number 90 megabits per second when it came to uh, the Anchor card reader speeds with this Benfi? It's 30. So with this SDXC2 card that you can read it up to 277, it reads it at 30. Like, <laughs> Now everything else non SD card related, this product performed very well. I had no issues with my fully loaded charging, no issues with the data transfer through the USB hubs, the HDMI port worked, which is something I didn't think I would have to say, but the most expensive hub in my test group, every single time I jiggled the hub, the SDA HDMI cable would cut out. So it's above average in terms of performance, terrible for an SD card, but the biggest pro is really that price. Again, 20 bucks at the time of this video and is really hard to beat. This USB-C hub from Sabrent is cheaper, but this thing performance wise blows this thing out of the water. All right, what's the best USB-C hub that I tested? It came from Ugreen. This hub is fully metallic and it feels great. This thing performed well in almost all the 14 different criteria that I tested on, but there's one feature that catapults it into the stratosphere in terms of my rankings. Now, because of its all metallic design. The average weight for USB hubs is about 77 grams. This thing was 107. Now keep in mind that is grams, so it's it's not terrible. The one port that this thing is missing is an ethernet port. So, you know, if that's important to you. And the last concern that I have for this product, again, has to deal with <laughs> these stupid little cards. Again, like always, data transfer speed is at 90 megabits per second. Now I know I've said it's a pro for other products and this it's a con for this one only because the data transfer speeds through all the other ports were like incredible. All right, let's talk about why I think this is something everybody should have. First of all, it's got a long cable. So when you're using it with an iPad, you're not hanging dongles. Second of all, these USB-A ports are fast. Average hubs transferred things from my external drive at about 400 megabits per second. This Ugreen 7-in-1 hub did at 800. When it came to charging a device, this thing was 25% faster than the average hub. So SD card data transfer, average USB-A transfer stuff, Amazing, charge speeds, amazing. But that's not the biggest benefit. The biggest benefit of this product, it's got two USB-C ports. Out of the 12 or so that I've tested, only three has that. And one of them has it by accident, I think. These guys had it by accident. All right, pups, that's kind of all we got. Questions, comments, leave them down there. First, I want you to watch videos. I do encourage you to click subscribe. If you're gonna get any of your stuff, make sure you use my links because this is an unsponsored channel. I do unsponsored content. Thanks for watching.